Welcome to White Eagle Speaks TV. Uh, Neil Jasky, I'm your host. Um, and today we're in uh, uh, Pine Ridge uh, at, the, at the Perry Casino today. And today we have with us uh, Dwayne Minihine and, and uh, Sherilyn Little Dog mm -hmm. and Roy. In Ingram. 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 This week's TV. This week's TV. Yes. And, and uh, mm -hmm. so, um, what I want to do today is uh, speak about uh, why they're on the show. Uh, a lot of things that are happening um, with with the tribe of Montana Blackfeet. Um, and we'll start with uh, Dwayne. Uh -huh. uh, if you like to. Uh, um, explain what uh, what's happening at what the Blackfeet. Well, in the beginning, <clears throat> I mean, we've had a lot of different groups that have stood against injustice on our tribe, based on uh, economics, based on um, families that have been chosen for positions, <clears throat> programs that have been. Um, taken advantage of by their directors and basically that our council has stepped up and has made um, rulings that were not in favor of our peoples and we as a group we um, have stood up against these hiring practices I was removed from a job for standing up and speaking against people who have basically taken control of our courts and our police administration and our financial stability and <clears throat> all of these things that are detrimental to our tribes um, resources and assets and you know the list is on and on and as we've um, uncovered um, these actions by individuals from our tribal uh, headquarters into our Glacier County, into our city, into uh, the state, you know, these actions carried um, into the BIA, which is part of the federal system. We have taken a, a step that is to bring health and to bring identification as a Blackfeet tribal member. Because us, we have to identify who we are. And our elders, they have imprinted it as we were growing up in our ceremonial ways that it is good to be proud to be a Blackfeet. Or Pakani. Amska Pakani, it means that we're south of the border, but in a certain, you know, stance, I believe that our brothers up in Canada were, were one tribe, Pakani, but we're cut off from that border, so. We um, come together with uh, Blackfeet Against Corruption as a tool that we can seek media outside of our res reservation boundaries. But as we played out since, I guess, 2010, this individual was um, illegally elected and he stood to uh, basically destroy our reservation, to take everything out from our reservation that identified us as a Blackfeet nation. In the beginning, with our treaties, we were recognized as a country. We had the same speaking voice with the government. We were our own country, but that has dwindled, and they took us to a, a nation, then they took us to a reservation, and now they're taking us to a tribe. So they just dismantled our identity gradually and today 
we have always not stood up and spoken out freely against our government because we trusted them to with our assets and our lives. But we have been so downtrodden that we want our other tribal members to speak with us. And we have been leading this charge since these activities have um, over, <clears throat> you know, trodden or they just trampled us through this whole process. And we have relied on Cheryl to lead our charge. And we're just, I mean, our creator, Amskapakani, I mean, um, how, how do you pronounce that, Marcella? And um, we just um, <clears throat> come to a point in our lives that we have put the Creator before us to help us through this, um, these barriers that are being set up to the different governments. And as a people, we want to survive through all of this, um, this turmoil that has been brought up, brought against us by outside entities that have no realization of who we are, you know, as a people of all nations, not just ours, but all across this country, people have been touched or stung by these decisions that have come upon our, all of our people on this <clears throat> continent. Some people view it as America, but, you know, that was a name that was given to this, this land. And we, <clears throat> as a people, want to stand up for our, our homeland. So we continue to reach out to different tribes and visit and um, have contact. So they can feel our pain that, <clears throat> that we're going through, through um, being neglected by our governments and our leaders and different um, selfish individuals. And our crimes have uh, go on resolved continuously. Even now, the support of our government is not uh, straight up for the benefit of our tribal people, tribal members. And so we're fighting for justice and through uh, the best way we know, know how, through our lawyer representatives. We had a lawyer, um, Crossguns, that, what was her first name? Roberta. Roberta, Roberta Crossguns. She helped us in a takeover effort in 2012, was it? Mm -hmm. 13. 13, well, 2012-2013, because one of our um, leaders, Cheryl, was removed illegally and we fought <clears throat> to put her back in a position as a, a secretary and uh, she <clears throat> led the charge of this takeover of our tribal headquarters, which has never been done in its history. But we removed those people who were <clears throat> basically um, dismembering our, our country, our, our lands, our um, support. Everything that they did took away our strength. And we're here to rebuild our strength as uh, a people and with Cheryl as our leader one of our many leaders, that we feel that if we have a unity with different tribes, other tribes as a Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota, and the Navajo, Diné, and uh, the Bloods in Canada, and whoever else, the Crows, we've had ceremony with the Crows, and we um, reached out to a lot of tribes to hear our plea that we need to band together in a good way to stand up 
against all of these atrocities. <clears throat> and we're just uh, beginning with this media at, what was your first name? Neil. Neil from uh, Sioux From Sioux Valley and our yeah. station here is on um, Why Do You Speak TV? Why Do You Speak TV? This is the first time since we began that we've had exposure of in this magnitude and we are grateful and so I'm just going to cut it there. And right, thank you. And Cheryl, um, I know um, did a, tried one of the business council members when you're on the, with the Blackfeet tribe. Um, how is uh, this affecting the the people within uh, the tribe itself, like in the office or uh, the tribal office? My dad was on the tribal council and um, he had passed two years ago, he passed from cancer. But um, he was a very stronghold um, along with um, other elders that have passed. Um, one lady I want to, I, I would do want to mention is um, Bernadette Erotatma. She, um, her and my dad, actually Roy was his um, camp crier, my dad's camp crier. He would call Roy and, Roy, we need to set up a meeting, you know, and Roy would get on the phone and, you know, do all the calling and, you know, get to, get the people there and they'd have a meeting at um, Muffet's place at the jug and, you know, with the people and stuff, and but it's it's you know with all of that, you know, it all ties together, and it's still there um, today with this council because this council hasn't dealt with any of the matters or the issues that had that weren't resolved. They're still not resolved. You know, how can you put somebody back together, back to work, that s stole a firewall from our tribal, you know? Um, tribal, our tribe, you know, uh, from the computer system there, when all of this was happening. How can, as a leader, how can we put people back together that held ransom over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars about that, you know, for payroll to people? Um, they have, we had over 800 and something employees with the tribe and every one of them checks got back with help. Um, we always heard that that side had got their checks, but everybody else wouldn't get their checks. They got their checks. The treasurer now um, that was with them during the impasse with Shannon and Earl and, and Sassy and them, um, she works today. Um, she's got a beautiful, beautiful home. <laughs> she buys cars like um, brand new cars, where the rest of us have have to look at her and say, "Oh, we know where you've got all that. We know how you've got all that." You know, um, the embezzling. You know, like I said, the corruption. It hasn't been dealt with. It's just pushed pushed aside, put under the rug, put behind the door. And um, Tyson M and uh, Harry Barnes, they, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to talk about it. Um, it's, it's better unknown and left where it's at than to be brought out and set in and, it, you know, dealt with in a right way. Um, our people are still, I would say they're still in turmoil. Um, they just haven't said nothing, you know. Um, I believe that um, as a nation, we need to stand, stand firm. Our people need to stand up and speak out against the wrongdoings of the council, of the ones that are doing wrong even today. Um, we are $21 million in the red. Um, there is several fire, several programs. Um, when we were in the impasse, we had hire, hired a man from Pro Agency to come in and be an investigator for us. And, um, and the, as I mean as us, there was me, Paul McEvers, uh, Willie Sharp, 
Bill Old Chief um, enforced in a cap plus ribs, then we um, needed to put in um, as an executive, um, as the executives, there was uh, me, Forstina, and Willie Sharp. Um, Willie was the chairman, Forstina was the vice chair, and I was the secretary of the Black Bay Nation. We had went in and um, had uh, Leon via, uh, um, we voted him in to, to help us as a council. Um, we asked many, many times the other side to come back and work with us so we could work as, um, as leaders and, and do what's right for our, our nation. They wouldn't do it. They would never come to the table. We always, I don't know how many times we asked them to come to the table. Um, they would never come to the table. They wouldn't, um, they just balked against it. Um, so then that's when we put in Leon VL um, and, and Shane Goss to help us with our tribe, to make decisions that needed to be made to make our tribe still go and, and produce forward and go forward. Um, it went forward little baby steps, little baby steps. Um, sometimes it didn't move forward. It was at a standstill. We couldn't do nothing because we were held hostage with our finances. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a long, long journey, a long journey with this. Um, I believe a lot has been been taken from me. Well, well, not really from me, but when my dad was alive, a lot was taken from him to watch me in office that he didn't get to because um, we were legally kicked out. But he stood by my side. He knew we weren't weren't wrong. And my my dad was a very honest, humble, strict man. You know, he fought for his nation. He fought for his tribe just like I am. And that's where my traits come from, is him. Um, the day he passed away, um, the, you know, I mean, a dying man laying in his bed of cancer, still thinking of his tribe and his nation, the last thing on his mind, called me over to his deathbed, my girl, you fight for our water, you fight for our assets and resources, you fight for our people, you keep going, he said, I see it. You're going to get back in there. And I was still kicked out when he had passed away. But he, he seen these, you know, he seen these visions. And he told me, he said, you're going to get back in there. He said, and you and the people, he said, you keep fighting. You keep fighting for what's right for our, our nation. You get us those resources and you get us those assets. And I believe that. And the most thing that, you know, they, they fought for was our water rights. And right now, that is that is up. up. It, it's scary um, because we have the senior senior rights of our water. Our water flows. We the backbone of our mountains is the Rocky Mountains, and we have the water that flows down north, south, east, and west from there. Um, it flows, you know, Tetons, Flathead River, all the way down. Um, the, the state, the United States government, wants this water. We were put in this place as Creator put us there for a reason. He, and I believe that being where we're at, we as leaders for our nation and our people could change things. We could have a water factory. We could have a water bottle factory. They don't, they don't want to do it. They want to negotiate our water with the state of Montana and the United States government. And it's all for that almighty daughter, dollar. And to me, um, that is the downfall of all people in the United States, is money. Money is, is, is no good. Um, it'll bring you down so fast in the blink of an eye. Um, I believe that for us to prosper, we do need to stand up, you know, and it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to stand up against 
the state of Montana because we do negotiate for years and years we've negotiated our assets and resources our oil and gas our alcohol our you know uh, tobacco taxes they get all of that they get half of that and why you know I've talked to several of the council here and they get all of that they get all of the royalties they don't negotiate with anybody and why as the people as Blackfeet people why do we have to bow down to a white man and say, oh, oh, we'll give you this, you know, we'll give you this if you do this for us. No, uh-uh. You, you know, and that's, that's where the, bar the Bureau, the BIA, you know, their, their trust responsibility is to protect us as natives, as indigenous people. Um, they don't. And I believe that we need to abolish the BIA. We need to tell the BIA and the superintendent, you no longer belong here. You need to leave. You've caused enough chaos for us. You've, you've hindered us. You've, you've stopped us from many things. But the, the chairman and the, the uh, secretary now, help us, help us. State, help us, help us. Tester, Bacchus. You know, whoever, help us. I mean, why should we have to rely on the state when we, they want us to be a self-efficient running government? How can we be self-efficient when we rely on the state? You know, they have no jurisdiction. Glacier County has no jurisdiction whatsoever on our Blackfeet Nation. Um, Cut Bank belongs to us. Cut Bank was illegally put there in 1919 by a man from Conrad, Montana. He's the one that formed Glacier County and Ponderay County. And um, Ponderay County also, and with Glacier County, also need floaters off the reservation. You no longer need to be here. You do not control our community of Hart Butte. Hart Butte is under Ponderay County. They use us as a head count. They use our youth in our schools as a account for all those monies. We don't see monies. We don't see nothing. Our people get nothing. We don't get no, you know, our per capitas are, are poorly. We don't get nothing from our casino. We just paid our casino off. Um, it's, um, you know, people ask me, how can how do you do it? How do you how do you be where you're at with everything that ha happens, has happened, and is happening now? I said because I'm put here for a reason. I wouldn't be here if Creator didn't want me to be where I'm at. Um, I actually had to really really pray hard when I ran. Um, I was really undecided if I was going to run, but I had elders approach me, so I told them. The year, the year ahead before um, inauguration and the running for council, I had asked them, they come and ask me to run. I told them I had to wait and pray on it and, and you know, just ask and receive my signs. I'm, I'm a very traditional, I believe in my traditional ways, my cultural ways. Um, I just believe that, um, like I said, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't um, for Creator, for Him being my strength, for Him guiding me where I'm at with my people. Um, and I'm here to do what I can, and I will do more. Um, I'm not afraid to go to jail for my people. I will go to jail again. You know, what they did to me was wrong, and they'll never live up to it. The United States government will never live up to it. They put me in Rocky Boy jail without the consent of anybody. Nobody knew where I was at. Um, the Bureau, I called the Bureau. Um, they wouldn't even help me. They would not help me. Um, I finally had, got a hold of my lawyer. And we, you know, and with me, when I was actually in jail, I was so distraught. I mean, I was just, my mind was, I couldn't even think of the laws. I couldn't even think of 
anything. So I, I had to sit there and there was a Bible sitting on the table in that cell. And I start reading it and that's where I start, my mind start coming back to where I could, could think clearly, you know. Um, I went and I start throwing up all those laws to the chief of police in Rocky Boy. Um, they weren't going to let me go and see a doctor, which was my right. I never even got to see the doctor to be held in jail. Um, when I went to the hospital there in Rocky Boy, the IHS, they denied me three times to see me. They would not see me. Um, they said they were too full. And I said, well, I can wait. You know, I can wait. I have time. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going back to jail. You know, um, but no, they denied me. They would not see me. So I'm in the process with that right now, just with with a tort claim against um, IHS with the bureau, the BIA. I'm doing a, a tort claim on them because that was their trust responsibility. I was a leader of the Blackfeet Nation. They should have stepped in and stopped it. Um, our so-called Chief Earl of Person, he could have stepped in. I asked him and went to him several, several times. I asked him to stop this chaos, to stop the stuff that was happening. He would never do it. He just let it, let it happen. And he's been in there over 50 years, and in those 50 years, he's never done nothing for our people. He's never, I mean, there's nothing to show what he has done but accept monies to go do talks to go give other non-members of um around the state of montana or from um other states indian names given bill cosby an indian name and an eagle feather you know i mean why why what, what sense was that? I mean, because he ran the Cosby Show? I mean, you know, to me, we have more important people um, that deserve an Indian name and a blanket on our Blackfeet Nation than a colored man. He's not Native American. Yeah, he's Native. He's, he's you know, from, I don't know where exactly if he's from you know, Africa, wherever, but, you know, he's not indigenous, he's not Native American, you know, he's not Native, he's not. And I just believe that um, us as, as leaders, we need to, to be leaders. You know, we need to listen to our people um, because they are the ones that voted us in. That's important. That's why we are down here today. We got invited down here. We got, we got here early Saturday morning. I traveled from Montana. Um, it's, uh, you know, very um, honoring to be here and listen to this um, the seven um, fire chiefs of the, the Lakota um, tribes here. Um, and as, as, like I said, as indigenous people, we need to come together as one. We need to stand together. Um, I think if we all come together with all the tribes, even across the United States, stand up against the government, stand up against the states, tell them, no, we were put here first. We are the real people. We were, we're indigenous. We're strong. We're going to band together. We're going to take what belongs rightly to us. It's ours, you know, the land, the water, all of it, the assets and resources. No more negotiating. No more. United States government, the BIA, you're going to listen to us. This is what's going to happen. We ain't little kids. We're not going to bow down to you guys and say, oh, oh, yes, 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 we praise you. No, uh -uh. no. I'm, I'm tired of it. I've been in my chair for, t for 24 years. I'm a paraplegic, and it hasn't stopped me from doing anything. And it's, it's still not. And I'm going to stand strong. 
with my Blackfeet people, with the Blackfeet Against Corruption people, um, with other people, other nations, other tribes around the United States. I will stand firm. Anything I can do for us as Native Americans, I will. Um, I will speak out. I'm not afraid to. I never have been. Um, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I was put in office for a reason. And people believe that there's no more chaos on the Blackfeet Nation. Well, I'm not telling you, it's a lie. Because there is, but it's just more quiet, more hush hush. Um, there's still more of the corruption, the embezzling, getting away with monies. Still happening. Still happening with this new council. Still, you know, not good. You know, they, I know that they, they weren't very happy for me to be coming down here. You know, they, they don't like it when somebody speaks out. They don't like it because I speak out. You know, it's not good. Just like I said, you know, with the people that had gotten hired back, that's even worse because the corruption still happens because they were just as corrupt. The story that needs to be uh, um, brought out, um, very important. Um, Roy, um, I'd like to uh, what your what your thoughts are, and uh, if you can give your um, what's you know your thoughts and what's happening here. Where the Nitsitsipi, the real people, where the Umskapi Pakani, we're from Montana, up along the 49th parallel up there uh, by Glacier National Park in Canada. Um, we were once a powerful tribe of the Blackfeet Confederacy. Original territory consisted of uh, pretty much the whole state of Montana, up into Canada as far as the, Saskatch the Saskatchewan up there. Um, we were a dominant tribe back in the day with our elders and stuff. And our territory is our original homeland. We weren't relocated like a lot of these tribes had to be. They, the federal government shuttling around and relocating to different parts of the United States. But us the Blackfeet, that is our original territory. And legally, we still own the state of Montana. We've never been compensated for it. They took it from us. We haven't been compensated for it. It's in our tree of 1855. And um, it goes back to you know, basically speaking about uh, our council. We don't have strong leaders in there to represent us, you know. Uh, we elect people in that we feel is gonna do the job for us. But when you get them in there, they turn their face on us and they don't protect what is ours. You know, we have a lot of valuable resources there. Uh, we had a large land base. We have a water, which is the most important thing now. We got timber, we got oil, we got gas. Uh, we have some some of the best fishing rivers, streams, and lakes up there, and and it, throughout the whole wide world, we have blue uh, blue collar fishing up there, you know, and so that is what's important to us, and that is why I'm um, I joined the fight to protect my Blackfeet people. I'm fairly new at this. We've had people that's been doing this their whole lifetime. I've only been doing it about ten years. And the reason that I then joined in the fight was to protect our Blackfeet resources, protect our Blackfeet people. Um, it's, it's sad when we have leaders that do not stand up for our rights, they do not stand up for our beliefs, and they basically just become dictators. They get in there and they become a self-controlling government, and they do what they want to do at any disregard to the us as the, the Blackfeet people. Uh, as Cheryl stated earlier, uh, we talked about the takeover of our tribal council. Um, there were peaceful demonstrations. We weren't radicals. I'm labeled as a radical. I am not a radical. The true definition of a radical is one who speaks the truth, and that's what I am. I want the people to know, I want to be heard. And I only speak for our Blackfeet people. Um, when we took in and marched in and took over our tribal headquarters, Cheryl herself, being in a wheelchair, a council person, 
she was arrested. She was kidnapped. She was taken off our reservation, taken to another reservation in Montana against her will. We had elders that were arrested, that were abused by the law enforcement officers. I have an 80-year-old aunt whose wrist was broken in one of the scuffles there. Knocked her over and she broke her wrist. And to this day, she wears a brace on her wrist. There's no justice um, as of today. That has, none of the officers that uh, were involved in this altercation um, have had charges brought against them. There was no arrest made. Um, I know Cheryl appealed it to the ABIA in Washington. They looked at it and they said yes. They said uh, there is just cause, there is justification to where it should go forward. What did they do? They referred back to the BIA. <laughs> and that's where the problem started. They went back to them. They completely got rid of it. They said no. And I think Cheryl is still trying to get something done with that. She talked about one of our 72-year-old uh, uh, elder there that um, uh, was imposed an excessive fine of $12,000. And our Bhakti travel ordinances, the highest that we could be fined as a native, as a Blackfeet people, is 500 bucks unless it's a major crime. And that was nowhere near a major crime. And to this day, that poor man has never gotten back his, his, his money. Uh, that was twelve thousand dollars that we're talking about. So, uh, like I said, there's no justice, you know. And everywhere we turn, uh, we're being silenced. The media up there in Montana will not cover it. Um, we reach out to the newspapers. They only print what they want to print and what they want the people to see and hear and read about. The news reporters. To local TV stations. We've reached out to them several times. They will not do nothing. During that time that we took the uh, takeover of our tribal business council, they were actually calling in the, the United States uh, uh, militia to come in and subdue us. And we didn't have no weapons or nothing. We were just some peaceful demonstrators there. And I made a phone call to an attorney out of California, and he contacted somebody. And he had that military turned around before they hit our reservation. But they were coming in to do bodily harm to us. You know, um, almost basic as to the, what went on down here, you know, with the Sioux here um, at Wounded Knee. We're all over that. It's written all over in the history books. But we're faced with the same problems as the Native people across the whole continent, you know. Um, and I think it's about time that we stand strong as a Native people and protect what we have left because if the, at the rate it's going, if we don't take a stand in it against us, um, we're not going to have anything. We're not going to have anything. Um, and as us being, uh, the Black people being a sovereign nation, we're only a sovereign as we execute our sovereignty as an Indian people. If we don't execute our sovereignty as an Indian people, then we are not sovereign. We fall at the realm and reality of the white man, of the federal government. Um, my Aunt Bernie De Niro talked on it. The county came in and tried to possess her property, repossess it, and take control of it because of delinquent taxes. Well, she paid those taxes up until one day she said, I'm a Native American. I'm an indigenous person. Why am I paying these illegal taxes? So she took a stand against the county, the state of Montana. She refused to pay those taxes. She went on to higher ground, you know, and to spiritual spirit land and she hasn't paid those taxes and the county government Granger County is still trying to get access to repossess her, her property but she brought um, open eye to the other people and all those years nobody stood up against them she was the first one of us black feet that said hey I'm tired of paying these illegal taxes I will pay them no more 
And so she opened up the, the reality to the county, and they don't like it. They do not like it. They have a lot at stake there. It was said that if we were to go ahead and win this case and collect all of our back taxes that were illegally taken from us, all of our Indian lands that were illegally taken, that we would break Glacier County, the whole Highland area, they wouldn't be able to function as a business. And so that tells you something as us as an Indian people. The white people are making a democracy. They're profiting. They're getting rich from us as Native people. But yet us Native people are some of the poorest people in the nation. This reservation we are on, there was a documentary uh, about the poorest race, the nation in the United States, this Pine Ridge Reservation. Um, but that's the way the white man has wanted it. That's the way they see us as Native people. But we are rich in many ways. We have our traditions. We have what's left of our, of our Native tongue. And we have our um, ceremonial ways. And they can never ever take that from us. Um, us as the Blackfeet people, they tried to force gen uh, assimilation against us, genocide. They took away our native tongue. First they killed our buffalo. They figured that without the buffalo, we would starve to death. Well, we become de dependent upon the white man. Government rations taking the government's hand out. And they turned around, we were still survived. They turned around, they took our native tongue away from us. They took our Indian kids. They sent them off to ship them off our reservations to these government boarding schools. We lost our native tongue through that. We learned the white man's way of power, the pen. We learned the white man's tongue. And it made us more stronger than what we were as a native people. Because now we're educated. We know the white man's way. And that is where they messed up, is here. We can fight them legally in court. We got documents. We can go back. Uh, we have records. We have treaties that have been broken. Our 1855 treaty, they made amendments. They wanted more from us, so they'd make amendments to take more of us as a Blackfeet people, more land base. And these amendments have never, ever been ratified through Congress, so they're illegal. Our Glacier National Park, which we as a Blackfeet people still own, and I'm proud to say that, mm -hmm. that uh, they never did ever finish paying us for it. Our Indian people were asking $3 million for it. The great father, as he referred him back at the White House, he said, he's not going to give you that. We'll give you 1.5 million. So they're forced to take it against their own will. They took it. But we never ever paid it. We've never been paid the payment. So these are things that justice that me as a Blackfeet person, I stand up against. And hopefully, with us taking a stand and uniting with the other Indian nations across this United States, we can come together and these, we can fight this together as one people, as one Indian people. And maybe there will be a day coming that we will get our justice. You know, we're not here to ask for a thing that's unreal. We're only here to protect what is ours and reclaim what was illegally taken from us. And it goes back to our tribal governments, our tribal council people. If we could elect the right people in there that are going to stand strong against this, this government, the encroachments from the outside people, then that's when it's become reality and we will get what the justices that is due us as Native people. We had two Blackfeet members a few years back had fought these illegal uh, forced patent land fees. And they took it as far as uh, the White House. And the White House looked at it, Congress, and they said, yes, they said, we get permission from your co tribal council people. We will initiate an investigation to move forward with this and go and look at what you're saying. 
got before a council and they turned it. They said, no, we do not want to do that. We don't want to do harm to our, uh, our white friends. We don't want it. This came from our chief. I'm not going to do this to my white friends. And so without strong leadership, I guess we're, we're pitiful people. We need people in there that can stand up for us, protect us, stand up for what is right as a black people. We have a lot uh, at stake here, you know, um, our water. That is the last thing what they're trying to get from us now. They're trying to take our water. They're forcing us into a water compact, which is illegal. It was signed by one council person. In order for a document a resolution to become law. It has to be a quorum of six. It has to be approved by six members of our Black Each Other Business Council. And even at that is not legal. It just sets the, 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 the resolution in motion, the process is in motion. But before they can act on it or do anything, it comes back to us, the Black people. It has to be approved by one third electoral vote of the eligible Black voters. And that has never been brought back to the people for vote on it. And it's sitting in Washington now. Cheryl visited a few months ago. She visited Washington, D.C. And she asked a question. Once it's approved by Congress, it's set in stone. It, it, they're not going to kick it back to us, the people. It becomes law. And they said, yes. They said, once it becomes law, that's final. Mm -hmm. But they're telling us that they're going to go ahead and they're going to bring it back to the people to vote on and we know it's not going to happen. Once they do what they want, our vote is not going to count. They're not going to bring it back to the black people to vote upon it. And we already have in place the decreed water creek that was established by our elders back. I don't know what year it was. But they're trying to force another water decree on us, which is illegal. That is not right. 1908 or something. 1908, I believe, was what it was. And we already have a standing one that was in place. But now they're trying to push another one. 2008, this compact, this illegal compact was set in motion. And water is valuable. You look in California, you see all those Lake Orva, about 300 feet from the shoreline down to the water. There's no water there. Um, we have some of the purest water in the United States. We can still go to a stream, get a drink out of it. We have freshwater fish that we can fish. And as a Blackfeet people, we have those rights. We can go to all our, our tributaries. We can fish our lakes, our streams. But if the state of Montana gets control of our water, those ways are going to be gone. We're not going to be able to go to our sink and get a cup of water here. Every time we twist that knob, it's going to cost us big money to pay for that. It's bad enough we pay our tribe for our own water, but it's better us paying our tribe for all the years we're paying the state of Montana, Cutbank, Glacier County. They were the ones, Town of Browning was collecting from all the water that we that were, was, were utilized as a Blackfeet people, our water. Mm -hmm. But even at that, I feel that you know, we shouldn't have to pay for our water. It belongs to us. But we need to stand strong against our water. We need to protect it. Our elders have said that the water is not for sale. This is documented in Washington, D.C. The Blackfeet elders at that time, who were our leaders, they said our, black, our water would never be for sale. And I only wish that the white men would honor that, our wishes as of Native people. Those are our forefathers. Those were our grandfathers. And I wish that they would... Um, honor that and not disrespect them. We've been disrespected enough. It's about time that they live, let us live as a native people and move on in this, this world, their, their, their so-called world. But um, um, as a native person, as a man, as a proud of Scott people coming, that is why I'm here today. That is why I'm doing this interview before you folks. That is why we come down and we visited with our, our new relations now. They invited us, they took us in. Um, it was a good meeting. 
I'm going to take this knowledge and this wisdom that I gained here and take it back to our Indian people back home and discuss it at the table amongst them. And maybe we can make some, uh, make some progress with this and make change as a Native people. Mm -hmm. that, I um, Let's create our watch over all of us. It's an honor and pleasure to have uh, Blackfeet Tribe Montana on White Eagle Speaks TV, uh, telling their story, telling the truth, and talking from their heart uh, the way it should be. And uh, um, we'll end it today with uh, very much, mm -hmm. all of you, yep. mm -hmm. speaking from your heart. Oh, and, appreciate it. Uh, uh, we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll follow up with you guys uh, uh, the, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, uh, please join us for another episode of Way to Go Speaks TV. And uh, one more question I do have, though, is, is uh, uh, the information, is there information out there uh, regarding what's happening out there? Like, is there a website? Is there, you know, how people, you know, can help or? Assist? Well, yeah, we do have that Blackfeet Corrupt Against Corruption website. Mm -hmm. um, what's the other one called? Um, there's Black also. Blackfeet who uh, want to change. Blackfeet who want to change. was one? So yeah, we do have websites that are out there available. Mm -hmm. Blackfeet um, News. Blackfeet News mm -hmm. is one of them. That's kind of a the tribal thing, but even at that, you can post it. Mm -hmm. I think all you have to do is type in the word Blackfeet, and several different hits will come up mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, Leon Vial is in the process of uh, uh, putting up another website. Mm -hmm. Hopefully now he has some money. He's out on the fire right now, mm -hmm. but he has to pay that fee to get that website started. And um, I think he was calling his Blackfeet for Justice, I think is what his website's mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. But if you just go to the internet and type in the word Blackfeet uh, of Montana, it'll, it should bring up these different websites. But one of them that's on it is Blackfeet Against Corruption. And feel free to go ahead and add to it if you have comments. Mm -hmm. If you want rapture back from us, address it, and we will go ahead and respond back with it. So. Okay. All right. right. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, uh, so uh, so please join us next time for Wedding Speaks TV. And thanks again for for our guest. since we began that we've had exposure of in this magnitude and we are grateful and the story that needs to be uh, uh, brought out uh, very important